In fact, saving tonight, some snap polls about the president's speech last night. According to CNN, 78% of those watching liked the president's presentation. Just 21% had a negative response. CBS poll says a whopping 83% of Americans approved of the president's proposals. Just 17% rejected them out of hand. So if you believe the polls, it was a good night for Mr. Obama. With us now, Dr. Mark Lamont Hill, who teaches at Columbia University. So, Doctor, I'm going to ask you the same opening question I asked Ms. Laura. What was the worst thing about the president's speech? It was just so meandering. I mean, it's hard to find one bad thing about the speech. He seemed to jump all over the place, particularly toward the end of the speech when he kind of added the, the uh, gays in the military thing. He talked about Afghanistan a bit. It just felt like it was spread too thin. And I thought the gestures to the, to the right were far too transparent. And it seemed really Give me an example of the gestures to the right. All the talk about tax cuts, were, that was purely to court the right and to get some outstanding ovations from the right. And I thought that was a little disappointing. He was making, to me, an attempt to move toward the center in this speech. But don't you believe that tax cuts stimulate job creation, which 75% of the speech was about? No, I mean, per perhaps that's true. And I think de de deciding whether, whether or not it should happen in the private sector or in the public sector is an issue he could have delved into a little more deeply. It seemed to me... He it wants was, it both ways, though. Well, that's my point. It was a very right. superficial gesture. I don't think there was no substance to it. All he was trying to do was make everybody happy. That's why 83% of the, of the public was happy with it, because he didn't say anything that was controversial. But isn't that shrewd? I mean, the guy's on the ropes after Massachusetts, all right? People are questioning his leadership. They're thinking, oh, my God, is this whole thing falling apart? The guy doesn't have any experience. Will we wrong to vote for him? And then he gets in there, and he gives you what... Uh, uh, do you ever see the movie Chicago? No. The old razzle-dazzle. Ah. Uh. Okay? Gives you the old razzle-dazzle where, okay, we're going to create jobs. The big government job program is going to kick in, but I'm going to give tax breaks to small business and, and this, that, and the other thing is we're going to do a twofer. Blah, 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 blah. That's my point. That's so not everybody's happy, but right? That's, that's not leadership, though. That's political cowardice to me. Stand up for something. And if you, and if you don't want to say anything controversial, then streamline the speech. We could have cut 30 minutes off the speech from the 20 top. Easy. Easy. 20 and, easy. And just talk right. about a, a speech as about jobs and say, look, this is, a, this is about 2010 creating jobs and be very narrow in his analysis. Instead, he tried to make everyone happy, and as a result, he seemed but to he's getting his butt kicked being a big government guy. So you're a, a liberal guy, very liberal guy. You believe big government can come in and level playing fields, but he's getting his butt kicked with that approach. And I said on this program, he's going to have to get away from that or they're going to lose both houses in November. He's got to look out to November. He's going to lose <laughs> all his power. Well, they're not going to lose both houses in November no matter what, but they can lose some power in November if he doesn't move toward the center. That's his strategy. I understand that. However, he didn't say anything substantive. People are going to see through that. Right now, he'll get a bump in the polls. But in a week or two, when people begin to see the policies develop, they'll realize that he still is not doing well, what the people want. Look, he did one thing that was very substantive. He basically said uh, health care is on a back burner. <laughs> More or less, yeah. And that's, that's pretty substantive. An, another disappointing move. To me, that's a concession that he shouldn't have made because to me, that's a, six, a but sign. But he's getting murdered with it. He's getting if, hammered. If health care is perceived to be a failure for the Obama administration, right. he's done in 2012. Absolutely. 66%, according to a couple of polls, don't like his proposal. So what do you want him to do? Get up there saying it's great and you 66% are morons? At some point, you have to stand for something. So far, this Obama administration has stood weak on just about if every public policy issue. If you stand for issue. something against 66% of the Folks, you're not going to be standing for anything. You're going to be out of there. Part of why 66% of the folks are disappointed or upset or disapproving is right. because of the process, because of how the Obama they administration... They don't understand it. Well, and they, the Obama administration has offered very little leadership, particularly at the beginning on the health care issue. The, the way to fix this is for him to step back in I front. I know. He's given 29 speeches on health care, and I still don't understand. And how many of them had details in them? How many of them was he... Was he tried. It's just like nobody knows what he's talking I, I, about. I completely disagree. I think the first 15 of those speeches, he said absolutely nothing. The first 15. <laughs> he said absolutely nothing. All right. I still don't know. You know, most people don't know what public option is. They don't know what they're talking about. All right, what was the best thing? When he finally he... stood up to Republicans, he waited, again, 45 minutes. I was on my second Red Bull by the time he said it. But what he said was, look, we shouldn't need a supermajority. We shouldn't need 60 votes in order to get legislation passed. He's, he pointed that the Republicans what, what is bad? are obstructionists. As, as Laura Ingram pointed out, his legislation is so liberal, the Republicans are never going to go for it. Are you honestly suggesting that over the last year, every single policy that he has put forth has been so bad, so far to the left, that no Republican can come on board? Well, that, I'll that, tell you what, absurd. the big ones... Cap and trade, health care, uh, things like that. They have been very left wing. I do you not believe that, particularly in the Senate, that people are deliberately not cooperating to watch him die. I don't know that. I'm asking, I ask that I'm asking what you believe. What's I your hunch? I trust your hunch. I, I, I don't know. I can't say. I can't speculate on it. It would be a good political strategy, of course, for the Republicans to rope a dope. Remember, they fight in hey, Zaire, Africa. That's, that's long before my okay. time, but I have seen okay. your black and white clips. It's good political strategy. For the Republicans basically to exactly. rope the dope and, and that's do what nothing. they're doing. Okay. They, they have a wait, 40 wait, wait, wait. But 
it's not good for the country to do that. I agree. Okay? So I can't tell you, I'm sure there are some Republicans that say, we're not going to cooperate no matter what. I'm sure. But I don't know if it's a majority Unless you tie those two claims together and say that Republicans are doing something that's bad for the How country, I, you're allowed to say that. Yeah, but can I read their minds? Why would I say that? I, I, I don't have any data to back it Democrats up. Democrats have the strongest majority in decades in the right. House and Senate, and yet and nothing they, is getting through. That's because that means the two Democrats things. Democrats are, are weak, and right. Republicans are obstructionists. No, the Democrats but are divided. They're not competing claims. No, they, they both are true. Democrats Look, are divided. Republicans are obstructionists. They can't obstruct. They, did, they don't have enough to, votes to obstruct. It's that the <laughs> Democrats couldn't get the 60 to do anything. Which they means that they, di they didn't have enough votes, which means Republicans had enough votes to obstruct. You're saying We're saying the same thing. No, I'm no. glad we agree. No, we don't agree on that. But uh, I got to go. But I will explain that more. Uh, what's your name again? I no, think Mark, Mark <laughs> Lamont Hill, everybody. Plenty more ahead as the factor moves along this evening, does it?